right. <laughs> now we're going to move on to some more news from Warner Brother, right, Caboose? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So uh, through a, a listing, like an advert for internships with WB Games, it seems that there was some information kind of provided there that gives us an idea as to the focus or the direction that WB Games in general and all the studios that they're working with are kind of heading in. And it's worrisome for some people. So what the listing had mentioned, uh, I'll pull it up here, is it says WBIE, Warner Brothers Interactive Entertainment, is currently involved in a variety of new projects, ranging from casual games to core games featuring our well-known franchises on all platforms with a heavy focus on live service. So obviously games as a service it's been rumored for a little while now that a game like suicide squad kill the justice league is potentially going to have games as a service elements to it through some job listings with rocksteady um gotham knights has yeah. been stated to not be because yeah I remember, service. I remember them saying that but when you look at a game like gotham knights it kind of it's Screaming games as a service it to me. Has, uh, it, yeah. it definitely seems like it's supposed to have those elements, but the developers have said, like, on the record, this is not a games as a service. Um, but then you have something like Back for Blood, which honestly I think will be a, a less harmful games as a service. You know, mm -hmm. that is a game that from like the get go is meant to be a multiplayer experience, something that you're going to play for years, you know, just similarly to Left 4 Dead. I mean, Left 4 Dead 11 years later and almost. 12 now people are still playing it like crazy um so i can see why they why turtle rock would want kind of replicate that in some way with back for blood yeah. um but then you have other games like hogwarts legacy um i'm not sure what else they have in the pipeline but you know this this definitely it has some people worried specifically with suicide squad kill the justice league because that would be something very different from rocksteady and from what we've seen from Avengers, Division, any game that isn't Destiny, pretty much, the yeah. live service thing isn't really working. Mm -hmm. So I guess I'll, I'll throw it to you guys, um, Marcel. I'll throw it to you first. Like I don't know what do you, what do you what do you think about this in regards to where WB Games is going? I, it sounds like they're just trying to throw like a bunch of darts and see what sticks or or something. Like I don't know um, if these games are fit for this type of this type yeah. of direction. Um, yeah, it's, I don't, I don't know. It's very. I, I just feel like they're just trying to try, try anything to make to get as much bank as possible. To yeah, be honest. yeah, yeah. That's how I'm feeling as well. I, yeah. I, the way that I look at this is, you know, a little while ago, not too long ago, we were hearing that WB Games is planning to be sold, right. yeah. and yeah. this might have been the pitch for them to not no, be sold. No. Well, and, and that's mm. the thing, like, I think from a um, perspective of a gamer, obviously, this is like horrible news, because yeah. <laughs> we've been burned so many times before mm -hmm. Battlefront, um, in terms of like, <laughs> what you know, when they're really trying to pinch your pockets. I think what you said about a game like Back, ba I was gonna say Back, Back for Blood, <laughs> that's like a whole nother game. Uh -huh. Back Blood. <laughs> um, I think it's like that. Um, you know, it works. So I, if they're able to manage their other games of service, where it's mostly cosmetics and it doesn't really hurt in terms of the progression right. of your game, that's the key. I think we are past the point of just exploiting. Okay, you know, if you need to progress further in this game after spending how you know eighty dollars on a game, you're also going to have to spend more to progress even further or take yeah. part in raids. Um, that does not work. But games of service can work. You look at something like Genshin Impact, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. It's so successful and it continues to be successful. A lot of games in Asia, um, because of their mobile game market, it works. We just have to find that happy medium. I'm saying, hey, if there's going to be any games of service, let it be one of the Lego games and I'll be happy. I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that that'd be cool with me but like you know i look at a game like suicide squad kill the justice league and i'm like how do you live service that you know like yeah, right. what are you just going to keep introducing new members of the suicide squad like how is there going to be a story that continues there like, is it like costume a system where you pay to be like level 20 maybe or like that, or? Yeah, <laughs> yeah you know like stuff weird stuff like that i'm just not yeah. sure what rocksteady can do and i hope that rocksteady mm -hmm. i listen at the end of the day, they've made three incredible games with the right. Batman Arkham franchise. Yeah. I do have full faith in them. I'm really looking forward to Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. Hearing the term live service obviously has some heads turning. 
Yeah. Um, I don't want to jump to any conclusions just yet. We'll see. Uh, especially considering the fact that like the fact that WB Montreal came out and were like, no, Gotham Knights is not live service. It gives me hope that Rocksteady may be in a similar position. Um, but they also said that before the news that Warner Brothers games may have been sold. Right. That's true. So that's, yeah. You know that's what true. You, were, you were saying of this might have been that saving grace as to why they shouldn't sell it. It may have forced developers to be like, OK, in order to kind of keep up with what our, you know, our um, publishers doing, we yeah. have to introduce games of service in some sense, Maybe. like a model, in some Maybe. sense. I think you could see that in Gotham Knights through costumes, maybe certain missions if you want available, like if. Um, one of the Suicide Squad, they have a very famous storyline that they go through. Maybe you experience that through paying additional um, money to access that story point. Maybe. I, I think there's ways for do it. Obviously, like I said, the best game to do it with would probably be Back for Blood. Yeah. Uh, back, yeah, back for Blood. It's the game that it makes the most sense. Uh, it, to it, do it makes yeah. the most sense. Yeah. I, I was looking up the list. Really, they just have Hogwarts Legacy, Suicide Squad, Kill the Justice League, Gotham Knights, Back for Blood, and Lego Star Wars, the Skywalker Saga. Yeah. And I okay, Lego, sure, put that in there. I'll be happy. And you have lots of parents that probably pay for it for their kids. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm I'm kind of 50-50 on this. Camille, you even said it. Uh, but there are games where it just makes sense. Back for Blood, yes. I, that's a game that I could see microtransactions being in there or games as a service type, um, you know, production in there. Same with, you know, Mortal Kombat, stuff like that. We've seen it just makes sense. And in regards to Suicide Squad, that's the one that I'm worried about the most because I feel like this is the game that WB looked at this and they're like, oh, Avengers is doing this. We could do it. And got yeah. so deep into development before Avengers kind of, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, with Avengers, that's what I was going to say. It's like, oh, boy, I, I hope that they saw what happened with Avengers yeah. and were like, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. That's the thing about development. Yeah, that's development, the, you don't know. You don't yeah. know. You take these risks and you put all your eggs yeah. in a basket be like, oh, it's going to be a sure thing. I mean, like Avengers – microtransactions games that that would, but also like, like gangbusters. but also like you you look at anthem you look at you know you look at division i don't even yeah. know how yeah, many other games of service have we gotten the last 12 like, years of ea you know yeah, <laughs> like, honestly, yeah. Yeah. Huge fandoms yeah. right um yeah. although ea battlefront huge fandom yeah. um there yeah. how it failed but i think you know studios go in this while they're in development they're so hopeful right yeah. and when they Mm -hmm. a failure or you know a setback like avengers had you try to look for the light at the end of the tunnel and that would probably be the hawkeye dlc right, yes, right so yeah. what avengers is doing now like what they're going to be doing is really keeping an eye on avengers if they've they've implemented any you know uh, microtransactions or you know games as service models within yeah. gotham Knights. um yeah. You know, they're going to be looking at other games that kind of failed that model in the superhero yeah. realm, and that is Avengers, and see how they kind of um, step uh, forward with that and, and get their fans attached to that. I think the fact that they have not launched uh, the game or, or spoke too much about the game um, is probably the, to their advantage. Luckily, they, I don't know if you saw, they just announced February 16th, I think it was. They're they're showcasing the Hawkeye DLC and, like, yes. the oh, next-gen really? version of the game. Yeah, so, like... Okay. We're finally getting an update. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Another word table. Um, but yeah, like I feel like for Warner Brothers, this is going to be a real pinnacle on like whether or not they're going to be able to keep their fans um, with fans that are used to them, you know, releasing yeah. something like Arkham, you know, Arkham yeah. Knight. Um, yeah. You know, they're going it, to, it's going to be a real shift. So I think yeah. there will be pushback if we do see that, especially in like those DC titles. Um, just because those gamers aren't used to seeing that at all. That's true. I mean, that's yeah. going to be the biggest sell, I think, for WB is getting those people on board. I mean, Arkham games, I think maybe, Caboose, you could uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but mm -hmm. I know Arkham Knight had some cosmetic DLC, correct? Like, you could buy specific skins. They had a season pass, and right. uh, and then you could obviously purchase the DLC separately, but yeah, there yeah. were skin packs, like Batmobiles that you can get. You know, like they right. did the whole thing with Batman versus Superman and all that stuff. So, yeah. so yeah, I think yeah. like you know they're kind of like they've already dipped their toe into it, but I, I, it does beg me to wonder like how egregious will it be and if people will be like, okay, 
we've already seen it with Avengers. I don't want any of yeah. this. I'm not buying this game. Here, like here's that. the here's my can, viewpoint of sorry, it. Sorry, I can go definitely ahead, ahead. see this in Hogwarts Legacy. Just how really? that game is you rumored to be supposed to be. There's so much that you could do in a Harry Potter world if you are a wizard in that world and you want all these different different types of wands, different types of cosmetics, um, different access to missions. Right. It, they will make so much money pay for that off for sure. that yeah. game for sure. Plus, the the leaks made it look like it's going to have plenty of RPG elements, like character yeah. creation and stuff like that. So, I yeah. would agree with you, Camille. The only thing is that it's already on an uphill battle against press because of J.K. Rowling. Yeah, yeah. I don't think that they would even bother to talk it's about huge, huge secondary like, risk. Yeah. To take. Exactly, talking about like you know so, being associated with a bigot as well yeah. as microtransactions. That's. Yeah. But they- <laughs> so quiet since all that turmoil with yeah. her um and obviously i don't support anything that she said but yeah. um i think they're staying quiet because they know firstly if they know that they're releasing a harry potter game you know right. they know that they want to continue with that franchise um it's such a money-making franchise so i think yeah. it's just a pr move on how to handle that messaging yeah. away mm-hmm. and separate themselves away from the, her mm-hmm. Specifically, yeah. I can definitely see them putting a you know microtransactions games of service model in it. But I'm sorry to interrupt, Kabu. So you were on, you were going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no worries, no worries. Um, I was just basically saying, you know, I, I look at something like Avengers, um, and the fact that like yes, it was games of service, but like I still remember enjoying the story. It mm-hmm. had a solid story, some good characters. Yeah. Like if I think if the gameplay was more fine tuned, if there wasn't as many bugs, if it got that extra delay and additional development time. Like it could have come out a really solid game. Then mm-hmm. we get the K Bishop DLC in a month or something. It's free. Hawkeye coming up after that. Everyone's main issue at that point would be the fact that there are these microtransactions that are a little absurd in price and that there is quite an abundance of them. You know, like almost every alternate costume you get for every character or something you got to pay for, which is lame. Um, but like if it came out in the right state and if it came out in. Uh, a position where they didn't have to delay their DLC two months. Um, there could have been something really good there. Um, and I don't think it being games as a service is what ruined that. Yeah. Because then you look at something like, I look at Destiny as well as a big example. Destiny came out, people were like, this is a flop. Not sure what the hell is going on here. Then they come up with a raid real close to launch. And everyone's like, wait, hold on. This is actually really fun. Yeah. <laughs> and every week people are raiding like crazy. They come up with the expansions, new raids to add. And now it's like one of the biggest games ever, like yeah. up front, you know? Um, so I think that there is there is something there for this mm-hmm. live service genre to work. Um, not that I want every game to be a live service, but also that I don't want to hear the word games as a service and immediately think yeah. this game will be bad, right. you know? Yeah. Like, I feel like it can be done right. It it can be done right. Um, You know, we've seen extreme circumstances where it's done wrong. We've seen circumstances where it makes sense. Um, Yeah. You know, um, with Destiny, though, but it begs the question, how long, like, can game of service work for every genre, firstly? Yeah. Right? And I don't think it can. Mm. Secondly, how long is a games of service model going to work for a particular game? So you look at something like Destiny. It was really good off the start, but then it went kind of downhill. Mm-hmm. Obviously, Destiny had some other issues to that, but it, I think it depends on the goal um, for these developers, what they're looking for. Like when you look at a game like Gotham Knights um, or um, Suicide Squad Suicide Kills Squad. Justice League, I think that there's going to be a second game. Second element of the game, especially for Suicide Squad Kills uh, Justice League, because of the story there that they're kind of setting it up to be. Um, So games of service model, does it make sense there? Probably not. Um, Maybe you sell a season's pass or- What about this? What about Suicide Squad isn't even the games as a service project? What if Rocksteady's just working on a Justice League game? And that's the next thing. The rumored Justice League game. And that's their games as a service. A mad oh god. I, I don't want no. I could see I'm I'm just saying no. I could see that being the case. I wouldn't want a Justice League game to be like this is gonna sound bad. I don't want to play a Justice League game with my friends. I'm sorry. Me neither. I wanna play Damn, it really? 
I want to play like when I think Justice League, my heart is with Justice League Unlimited, you know, watching that series. That's my own time. Mm -hmm. I want to go through it where we have those famous famous voice actors coming back to voice those characters where it is story driven. Yeah. We know where we're going. You know, it's not so maybe open world, but it's kind of like held back in a sense. Like I want it to be very focused with a really good story just because yeah. I find DC has great stories out there. Um, they're just not reiterated well in different mediums. And that, just, that hurts yeah. it. <laughs> I, I look at something like specifically like dual play from Arkham Knight when you could switch between like if you're playing with Nightwing in a combat yeah. encounter, you can switch between characters on the fly. And apparently now what they're doing with Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League is one of the features is if you're playing by yourself, you can switch on the fly to any of the characters. Right. And I think that's cool element and i think if you just have co-op there as an option like if i can play with my friends sweet that'd be fun is there a lot of fun to have on my own i think so i mean i would be down to be free roman in suicide squad in metropolis and maybe i want to play king shark during this one encounter maybe then i want to switch over to harley during the next encounter i think that sounds like a really fun concept to me and then if you were to apply that to like a Justice League game where you got your full squad of five or something like that, that you were to create to go into a mission and I wanted to switch between Batman, Superman, Green Lantern or whatever, whenever I wanted, that's cool. Or I can invite my friends and we can all just kick ass together. That sounds like fun as well to me, to be honest. Yeah, sure. like I feel like, okay, so what we saw with Gotham Knights, it looks really cool. Mm. I don't know how they're going to handle the story elements of that game. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like cutscenes. I don't know if, you know, when I'm in this experience, if I'm playing with a friend, then we go into a cutscene. Like, is it going to feel smooth? Um, am I going to feel emerged? You said for Gotham Knights? For Gotham Knights. Mm. You get what I I'm think, saying? I think like, the way it's going to work is um, because you're technically supposed to be going in every mission alone. Um, so I think the cutscene will play, if, if your friend's playing as Robin, the cutscene will play with him as Robin. Or if you're playing right. as Batgirl, the cutscene will play. With you as Batgirl. Yeah, but see, that's that's or maybe why it'd be host specific. Like, I don't know. Like I feel like you could lose the charm of each character, if that makes sense. Mm. Like when they're building out these stories, like when I think of the Arkham games, the dialogue between Catwoman and Batman obviously is very different than say, you know, Riddler and Batman. You yeah. have those cutscenes, and it's like, oh, he's referencing this from like the comic yeah. books, right? Yeah. Can you get that if you're able to change the type, you know, the character you're playing as? I don't think so. Um, to that scale, I, 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 I got to disagree. Really? Okay. I got to gotta disagree because WB Montreal has said like there will be missions that feel character specific. Like there may be characters you missions, interact with, but overall this. Like, you know, like they feel like side experiences, but will that come into the big picture as like, I okay, think so. this is like really well, cool. for instance, I'm like positive Ra's al Ghul, like the League of Assassins are going to be yeah. in Gotham Knights. Mm -hmm. Red Hood obviously has a very close connection to those characters. If you're playing as Batgirl, Robin, Nightwing during a mission that may involve the League of Assassins, it may not like I'm sure that there will be dialogue that works and makes sense with those characters. Mm -hmm. But you may have character specific dialogue if you go into that mission with Red yeah. Hood. And I feel like that's something that's an experience that they're going to provide through the entirety of the game for hardcore fans like myself, like yourself, Camille, who will jump in and know, oh, there's a there's a deep connection between these characters. I should play as Batgirl or I should play as Robin for this mission. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, I guess maybe I just need to see it work out well. Yeah. We haven't really seen anything like that on mm -hmm. that scale um, like I'm trying to think of something like that. We haven't, right? Um, yeah. They would have to do something in terms of, you know, Watchdog Legions. They kind of prided the developers prided themselves in creating separate dialogues for, you know, the different hackers, right? The, yeah. uh, so, so it'll be interesting to see how they script Gotham Knights, yeah. um, how that script changes, so it just doesn't feel like a skin over. Yeah, um, yeah, and yeah. That last throughout each mission of the game, or if they're just you know, one-offs for different mm. side missions when you're dealing with specific villains. Mm. Uh, it'll be interesting to see that. It really uh, feels but, like they're going to be like 
taking somewhere in between like what you said watchdog legion and kind of like gta 5 where you know you jump from one character to another and like kabu said it's probably going to be tailored to whoever is playing as that character so if you're jumping in like for instance like the mr freeze uh mission that they showed during the demo it, mm-hmm. i'm sure there's going to be some aspect to that game that's going to be different depending on who you're playing as oh yeah that way you don't have like yeah. that distinct disadvantage of playing say batgirl versus red hood or um nightwing yeah you know? yeah. yeah but to also uh, bring it back to um what their whole main plan is here for, for wb i feel like they could also go with the whole i don't know if you guys saw the whole crash bandicoot um nitro fuel um mm-hmm. route where, <laughs> They, I know this is, it's a weird connection, but let's hear me out. <laughs> but uh, um, they released the game, and then after they released the game, there was like no microtransactions or nothing like that. And at, after then, they just patched it in there, but uh, yep. like this quietly. And then everyone's like, "What is this?" Because after yeah. reviews came out, this game's amazing. There's nothing to buy. You could just earn everything in game. And then they like, "Oh yeah, here's a patch." By the way, you could actually purchase now some stuff and everything. And yeah, I feel like it's sad <laughs> to say any of these games have potential of just being like, "Okay, there's nothing out there now. We told you we kept our promise." And then once the reviews are out a month later, like, "Oh, you know what? If you want this." If you want Alfred to be a player, so you had to buy him now. Or like somebody else. <laughs> okay, but I would pay for the Alfred. I would pay for yeah. the Alfred. <laughs> oh, yeah. that's so cool. Yeah. Um, it, okay, I know this is going to be sounding bad, but I want to actually, let's probe that a bit. Is yeah. that necessarily a bad thing? Like, if we have a studio here that might have been going under a sale like Warner Brothers, mm-hmm. they promised already that Gotham Knights is not supposed to have any microtransactions like that or like games of service elements like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Say they release the game on their promise. There's not. Yep. Maybe six months down the road after it's released, they introduce some aspects of purchases through the game. I think is DLC is fine. Thing? I think DLC I is fine. DLC is fine. Yeah. But what if it's like one-off characters, like say an Alfred or um, say to get a suit? Is that okay? No. No, one no. Of them, that's where that's where I, I, I draw the line. Yeah. Like, really? like Marcel was saying, like I reviewed Crash Bandicoot and um, uh, Crash Team Racing. Was, and, yeah, that was the one. Yeah. 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 And and yeah, one of the points in my review was, oh, this game doesn't have microtransactions. That's really <laughs> cool. Yeah. A month later, they added it. I was like, well, you can't do that. So you guys, so you guys wouldn't be down for something like if they were to do a five dollar like. Here's Batwoman, but, or here's Batwoman Catwoman, like, or, or whoever. Yeah, I'm okay with that if that if the ex- expectation is set beforehand. You you can't come out and say it's like Avengers if they were like, oh no, my, no, uh, you don't have to pay for Kate Bishop or Hawkeye. Psych. Here's five dollars. You now have to pay right. for Hawkeye. Right. Like that's not cool. And but I, do I, we I, see I, that as games as a service or because like Arkham City had the the yeah, Nightwing DLC, DLC or just, Robin DLC. Right. Well, I think when it it becomes game of service when it starts not necessarily hurting the progression, but where it offers more like less than things other than cosmetic or mm. characters, it's more like mission based. Yeah. Um so say if you were if they set the expectation like, okay, yeah, there's no uh nothing you have to purchase in this game we're not doing that six months down the road say they have a pack with you know catwoman and you know couple like, missions couple, couple skins. missions that's probably really bad <laughs> what would you say Kavis? i don't know I, I i i guess something like that has felt like it's always been commonplace with games where they would do like a dlc story pack or just a dlc pack you know that that felt that feels to me departed from what games as a service is because like Arkham Knight has, has a season pass, right? It had story packs that you could play through cosmetics and stuff like that. But like when it ran its course, it ran its course, you know, like they weren't like Arkham Knight is not still thriving and and adding new content today. Um, So like if Gotham Knights comes out and they're like, here's our season pass, we got like six months of post-launch content planned. And that's our, that's our run for Gotham Knights. Like I, I would be okay with that. Obviously like depending on, pricing and and what kind of content is provided and all that um so i guess we'll see i don't know does that change if it progresses the core story of the game 
as long as the core story, as long as I buy Gotham Knights, the actual $60 game or however much it's been inflated to now on next gen, yeah. um, as long as I buy the main game and I feel that it has a beginning, middle and end. And okay. if it sets up something, it's setting it up for the sequel. But like what if you have an epilogue in a DLC? That could be interesting. I mean, Spider-Man had that. For that. Spider-Man had that. In a paid DLC? Yeah. The city that never sleeps. I, I know. But see, that. That's giving me some Mass Effect Three vibes. But yes, Spider Man had that. Oh, Spider Man had that like two years ago. Yeah, I get that they had that. that. That's an I agreed. You you got your ending, and then they had like the. But little, they set up. They set up for something, up and and the DLC hinted at that. It, yeah, it was an epilogue. But I'm just saying, like, I don't necessarily agree with that. Um, just I, be. Just I, I, did you have that. a problem with it with Spider Man? No, no, because I, 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 that. Of course I paid for it. But if games start going this way in terms of that model, I do find a problem because then you have developers now that know, okay, we have a paid DLC that's coming out. I'm not putting, I, I'm going to now space out the story of this game. You could get longer missions, right? Within games that aren't necessary filler missions. Yeah. Um, just so then you pay for that epilogue. And, okay. and that's my hesitation if it feels it's like it's cut way. from the main game if it feels like it's something where it's like you could put this in the main game like yes yeah. but okay. like i said with spider-man like it is an epilogue you know they mm -hmm. give you that stuff with miles that like the last cutscene in the final dlc pack from spider-man was the first swing session with miles and peter that yeah. obviously set up spider-man miles morales which we got um and so if it's something like that like i'm cool with that you know right. like because if you're going to give us DLC that's post campaign, there has it's already an epilogue in that way, you know, like okay. already. Um, and so I guess it's just all depending on how it's tackled. If it feels like, why was this not in the main game? I I wanted these answers and I have to pay for them, you know. Then it's like, ooh, I'm not sure how I feel about that. But if it's like, if it works, if I felt like I got a satisfying enough ending out of Gotham Knights, and then the DLC just gives me a little more, I'm cool with that. Mm -hmm. It's giving me like Capcom day um, vibes when like you have stuff on the disc and you pay to unlock the stuff that was on the disc already. I'm like, right. well, it was it was clearly on the disc already, and you know, like yeah, 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 why, why, why? yeah. And and that's the thing, actually, you do bring up a good point because I feel like um, when you have paid, like you get that in shooters, right, where you're gonna have like either cosmetics, a lot of shooter games. They yeah. have a lot of cosmetics in there or additional character skins you could play as. Mm -hmm. Fighting games is that other genre mm -hmm. where yep. purchases is very common, right? Like I think of something like Mortal Kombat. Caboose, I know you're a huge fan. I love Mortal mm -hmm. Kombat as well. They've done that very well. However, how many editions of Mortal Kombat 11 is out there? there right? Was 11. There was the premium edition. <laughs> there, was the Aftermath, <laughs> there was the ultimate edition. <laughs> There's rumors there might be another combat pack, so I don't even know like when well, there's gonna be another there's edition, an ultimate two edition. Maybe, you know? Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's just gonna keep going. Well. Did they yeah. have the ability to unlock everyone, but you had to pay for that as well? I remember that used to be a thing with fighting games back then as well. If you want to unlock all the characters, you just pay for the unlock for the rosters. So there's one character you can you can unlock through story progression in MK11, yeah. but they do give you the option to purchase the character oh, okay. if you want to just not play through the story. Yeah. <laughs> what are you um, but like outside of DLC, like all the characters are unlocked. Yeah, I must say, like MK11 is like uh, story mode. It was, it's, it's, it's really so good, good to run through. It's like a movie, honestly. It's, yes, I find it was one of the best ones out there for yeah. for a Did fighting you play game. Aftermath? Um, no, just the, the DLC no, story Aftermath, just the main, the main one. Oh, you got to play I, the expansion. It's, oh, it's okay. so right. good. I, mean, it's I was so just good. enjoying the main one. I'm like, this is really good. This time travel and everything. Yeah. Now, so. And look at me. I'm like, no for any purchases, yeah. but I, I purchased I bet you, I, and I, and I bet you <laughs> someone who's not even into video games, they're sitting there like, well, this is a good movie. I'm like, this is actually a video exactly. game. You know? <laughs> so for Warner Brothers, yeah. something like Mortal Kombat or yeah. Injustice, that makes sense, right? It's already yeah. there, you know, fighting games already has that. It has a history of that. Um, yeah. It'll be interesting if they switch that model, just because I feel like the fighting game community, because they're so niche and very outspoken, if there was any switches to that games of service model to make it more like purchase heavy, um, they'd be very vocal about that, that community. So it'll be interesting to see how Warner Brother navigates you know, this news in terms of their next projects, yeah. whatever yeah. they may be. 
Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't want them to be like you want to enter the back cave, play, pay five dollars. Yeah, 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 yeah. Get that out of my games. For sure. yeah. <laughs> oh my god, let's hope not. Uh, but for now, why don't we actually take a break? Chat, uh, stick with us. We're gonna just go to our back cave and take a quick break. We'll be back.